Welcome to the Cool Tools Show. I'm Mark Frauenfelder, Editor-in-Chief of Cool Tools, a website of tool recommendations written by our readers. You can find us at cool-tools.org. I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Kelly, founder of Cool Tools. Hey, Kevin. Hey, it's great to be here. In each episode of the Cool Tools Show, Kevin and I talk to a guest about some of his or her favorite uncommon and uncommonly good tools they think others should know about. Our guest this week is Rob Walker. Rob is the human resource columnist for lifehacker.com and a longtime contributor to the New York Times and many other publications. He's on the Faculty of Products of Design graduate program at the School of Visual Arts. And his new book from Knopf is The Art of Noticing, 131 Ways to Spark Creativity, Find Inspiration, and Discover Joy in the Everyday. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm doing really well, thank you. Yes, yeah, I'm really glad to have you join us. Um, we're talking about some cool tools, and I know you have some great stuff for, to suggest to us. I'm excited to be here, Kevin. So tell us about your first one, Rob. The uh, is it? I, I'm not going to. You you tell me what it's called. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I don't actually know how it's pronounced. Bien Fang, I guess. I, uh-huh. You know, it's a it's a brand of notebook, and um, it's a notebook that I've used for a long time, and I. I was a little, I'm a little cautious about raising a notebook because I know that people have such strong opinions about notebooks. Mm -hmm. Um, But what I like about, there's two things I like about it. One is that just the very basic, I use, I get the eight and a half by uh, five and a half size, the sort of small size. There's a larger size and it's half ruled and half blank. So each page at the bottom half is ruled and the top half is blank. And I like that to be able to either write things or sort of sketch things or whatever. And that's what drew me to these notebooks in the beginning. And I've been using them, I realize now, since college, Mm -hmm. um, where my friend Brett Howery, if he's still out there, shout out to Brett Howery. He had them and I was jealous and started (laughs) buying them too. Um, They were, it was a different design that like slightly, they were better um, in those days. But this is actually the other thing I like about these notebooks is that they're not too precious. They're actually kind of, cheap <laughs> and yeah, i've always had a pro- like i went i went through a phase of like i got a moleskin but i never felt like i had anything worth saying to it <laughs> yeah. to, to ruin problem, this beautiful object <laughs> do other people have that problem anyway oh, so, yeah i totally do um and then like i like field notes have you ever seen those notebooks those are really yeah, cool sure. but they're mm-hmm. small like i find you know they're 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 a little small, so you go through them a little too quickly, and then I'm always losing them and, and stuff. So yeah. So for someone who's looking for like kind of a midpoint thing, that's um, that's uh, it's a neat notebook. It's spiral bound, um, but it's not too precious. It's not like this object that you feel like you're spoiling every time you write down some dumb observation. <laughs> so 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 with this spiral bound is kind of mid size. Does do you carry it, and where do you carry it? Does it fit into a pocket, or do you have to? It doesn't put it in the fit backpack? into a pocket. It fits into. Um, I have a, like a sort of a shoulder bag that it fits neatly into without taking up too much space. That's the main thing that I carry in. So I'm not. I'm not so I've never been a carry them everywhere kind of person. Um, there's only certain situations. Like uh, if I'm if I'm traveling, then I'll have the notebook. Otherwise, otherwise, I, yeah, the truth is I'm never going anywhere. I'm just sitting in my room. So I can just leave it on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, they're, they're about, looks like about five bucks, five yeah. and a half bucks. If you buy them online, you get it for five or six bucks each. Or if you buy a bunch, they think they're even cheaper. Um, okay. And at this point, I I haven't seen one in a store in a while. Um, but you used to be able to get them like at uh, art supply kind of stores. I guess I haven't been in one of those kind of stores in a while. So I just buy them online. And I've got a big stack of them now, and they're 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 uh, yeah they're reliable. Okay, the spiral bound. Okay, great. And, do, and you probably never do you ever rip pages out, or do you? Um, the spiral bound is just so that they can lay flat. Is that yeah? Idea? I do. I mean, on the on the sort of they're not that precious tip. I will rip a page, like if I just mm. need to, like here's my phone number, just write it yeah, down, right, and rip right. it on hand to somebody. I don't feel bad about that. Like oh, I've ruined it or anything. Right. Um, so yeah. Uh, and you know, you fold them up, whatever, like I said, the one on my desk had, like I put sticky tabs in them and uh, things like that. Okay. okay. So I have a question. When you fill up the notebook, what do you do with it? Uh, I set it off to the side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a good question because, um, about a year ago I did go through 
a bunch of them. Like I, I put them in a box and I, and I, I went through a bunch of them and it was pretty interesting. And I realized, you know, Oh, all these little ideas that I had, that I didn't follow through on. I'm going to follow through on them now. And then I just didn't follow through on them again. So I had that experience. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's funny. Well, one of the weird things that happens to me is I, I go back and I, uh, and I find out that an idea that I just had yesterday, I actually had five yes, years ago. Yes, yes, like, yes. Oh, my yes, gosh. Yes, yes. Uh, that's the yeah. most depressing thing. And it's also kind of <laughs> – it's also kind of comforting too. It's like, it is kind of comforting. <laughs> it's like when you realize that that song, like, oh, I, I, oh, this, I discovered this great new song, and then you realize, oh, I already have that, but I gave it five stars, so <laughs> I am who I am. I'm really true to myself. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that just reminds. Once I was reading, I was at a bookstore, and there was an, a book about uh, how to make cigar box guitars, and so I opened it up and I started reading the the forward to it and I'm like this guy really knows what he's talking about this is like really cool I get to the end I, I wrote it <laughs> I completely forgot yeah wow <laughs> You should support that guy. Go buy his stuff. Yeah, right. Support him on Patreon. So uh so uh moving on tell us about your next one about a okay. a, uh, a toggle a light switch. Yeah. Okay. So this is called SwitchMate, and um, this is. A, have you ever encountered this before? It's ostensibly a smart home product, mm -hmm. but um, what it really is is it's uh, it's kind of like a little box that that, you, that has magnets in it that you can put over like just a standard toggle switch, mm -hmm. and it has this over. I mean, it, you, you don't wire it in. It's just you actually don't wire just, it in. You it's stick magnetically it on top. sticking onto yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. And it's just like, it's kind of, it actually reminds me a little bit, Mark, of the thing you're obsessed with those, those uh, the uh -huh. useless machine where it just like yeah. clunk. Right. And that's all uh, it does. It just switch. goes clunk yeah. up and clunk down and flicks the switch. So it's kind of like a dumb smart home product, but it happens to be, and you do hook it up to an app to put it on a, on a timer. Mm. And that's why it's perfect for me because it hap we happen to have these front lights that are on a standard toggle switch. And I was always forgetting to turn them on at night or turn them off. And then like, I'd leave them on till noon or something. Cause I would just forget. And, um, I didn't want to go through the whole rigmarole of like rigging up, like getting an electrician. Like I didn't want a problem. And I, I randomly discovered this thing and I thought that's sort of looks perfect. And it's 25 bucks, which is kind of a lot for something that's so silly, but it's, so, so I'm, it's I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to gather. So this is a little cover that goes over your normal standard toggle switch yeah. on a wall. Yeah. And the idea is that they, that this is a smart version that can be controlled by something or other. Well, it's so all that is, there's a mechanism inside that literally just flips the switch that just physically like a thing moves it's, up or down. Clunk, it's a wireless clunk. finger. Yeah. And you're right. So the, so the triggering of the movement is done, is done wirelessly. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, so so it's a way to turn a wall switch into wireless without having to do any wiring. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So you don't have to, you don't have to replace the uh, the switch. You just cover this. You just go over the top yeah. of it. Yeah. With yeah. this non-invasive. Yeah. Um, cover, which then you can control with a phone, basically? Yeah, or yeah, your... yeah, yeah, app on the phone. Okay. An app this on is right. exactly okay. what I need, because I, I bought a, a two-pack of these little Wi-Fi switches to control lights in the front yard and backyard of my house. The front yard had what I needed, which is a neutral wire. It needs a neutral wire, and so I installed oh. it. It, was it. It turns on at sunset, turns off at, at sun, uh, you know, it, 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 it it's... Right, and then the other right, one right. though, I it only had a ground wire, not a, not a neutral. There's a difference between those, and so it wasn't working. Oh. And so and I just flipped the switch on off at night. But this is exactly what I need. I don't need to worry about the wiring. <laughs> well, so uh, the cautionary note for you and listeners is that it it you have to look at your. So first of all, it only works for the standard toggle switch. Although I believe they also make them for. For the a rocker, rocker, I think switch. A rocker yeah. version, yeah. But like, if you have a dimmer, you're totally out of luck. And then the other thing is to the sometimes switches are built in a way where they're too close together for this thing to like it. it, it yeah, if there's a multi one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that gets a little that gets a little tricky. Yeah. So right. you want to buy it from someone where you can return it if it just doesn't doesn't fit. Right. Right. And, and 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 so there's a there's a dedicated app you have you have to invoke yeah. the app to. Yeah. It's called and, Switchmate. And does it 
presumably the app can control more than one switch uh, independently, or do you have to? Yeah, it uh, uh, agreed presumably because I've never I've only got the one. But the way it's set up, you, yeah, you you uh, you uh, when you open it, you pick, you know, you choose, you give it a name, and like so, you could do backyard and whatever. Um, so this I, is sort of like your dumb smart house. It's totally it's totally a dumb smart home product. It's the dumbest smart home product. And does it, <laughs> does the app know like can you can you enter your your uh, location coordinates, your latitude and longitude, so that. No. It doesn't yeah. do okay. The other one no, is you gotta that, set which it is great because it adjusts throughout the year and turns on as soon as it's dusk. No, that would be great. I would love it if it were like ten percent smarter, but I was so <laughs> I was so happy with it that I can't really complain. And and in some ways we have a ring doorbell. Yeah. And I'm not happy with how much smarter that keeps getting. Like you know what I mean? Like they keep adding new features, quote unquote, where I now get alerts about things in my neighborhood and stuff that I, that was, I don't want to know about yeah, dog barking or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or just like someone in the neighborhood's porch, here's footage of a guy rummaging <laughs> on our porch and like, I don't uh-huh. want to know that. Hmm, I'm not getting that information. I wonder why. Um, I didn't sign up for anything. Maybe that's why. Well, I think, yeah, I don't know, but it, it's some kind of neighborhood. I think it's what they're emphasizing in their business now is this sort of neighborhood watch element. I didn't sign up for it either, but it's it's one of those things where I'm, you know, at some point I got to look at the preferences and figure out how this happened and okay. make it go away. But well, that's a great to- one. So what's another uh, cool tool for us? Okay, I'm going to go with, I'm going to, the next one I'm going to talk about is that podcast. Um, okay. Which is uh, In Our Time uh, yeah. from BBC Four, I guess. Do you, either yeah. you guys know this show? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I've been yeah. a long, long oh, okay. time. Okay, so you're a fan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Well, I'll tell you about it anyway. No, not that <laughs> Hopefully some of your listeners won't know about yeah, it. Yeah. But I'm a huge fan. I've been listening to it for some years now, but it's uh, the, the host name, I guess, is Melvin Bragg, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. the premise is that every week he gets in three academics uh, to talk briskly for an hour through one topic, which can be anything from, they just did Frankenstein recently. They did Ulysses Grant. Uh, I like the history ones, but so Incas, um frederick Douglass they did recently and it's kind of like i was thinking of it it's sort of like um those great courses things except it's all just boiled down to one hour you know and it's just lightning fast and i also i'd I'd be curious what you guys have to say about this since you're listeners to it i've over the years become very interested in trying to figure out what melvin thinks of the guests (laughs) Because sometimes he seems really annoyed with them. <laughs> like they're <laughs> no not moving patience, fast enough forever. or they're not, right, like right. he kind of tangles yeah. with them. But right. then sometimes he seems really impressed. Uh-huh. And then they have the little thing now. On the, if the good thing about the yeah. podcast is they have the little five Jeez, minutes yeah. after they go off the air or whatever. Like, let's talk a little bit more, uh-huh. which I find incredibly um, yeah. charming. I really so, love that show. Uh, so besides, besides the history, they, they, he does have a science component. So there'll be some of yes. gravity waves or the electron. Right, right. Um, or and, Venus they did right. not long ago. Yeah. And, and his, his, his chief role, which is really brilliant, is, is he, he kind of forces them to go through this kind of a logical manner so they're just yes. not rambling. Yes. He has, he has, they have notes that gave him and he'll kind of structure something. In history, he'll go through chronologically and he'll ask the questions and keep it moving and keep them focused, which is where he sometimes gets a little grumpy. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but he is, but it does work for the listener because he will get through the whole thing, as you say, very, very briskly. The other, the other cool thing that is maybe takes a while to notice, but he has three guests and they're all Dons, you know, in Oxford or somewhere, but almost <laughs> invariably two of them are women. That's true. That's true. There are always two women, which is obviously has to be some a very deliberate practice of his, which is really great. Um, and I also find that the more obscure and and esoteric and weird uh, the topic is, the better. That's it's, true. It's like it's like it's it's you know it's where you take the most obscure thing and then you go really really deep, and it's always fascinating. I am fascinated by what kind of prep work must go like. I don't know how they find it because they, they, they do a pretty good job of finding people who, because that's not necessarily the job of an academic is to, you know, to be able to talk briskly to a general audience, you know? Um, and they always seem to have, you know, every once in a while there's someone who's a bit of a clunker, but they, because he moves it along so well and they must prep these people or audition them or something. It's uh, it's quite impressive. 
It is. It is. And it's, and it's, I think it's weekly and all the, you know, the back archives are all available. Yeah. I highly recommend it. It's actually only 45 minutes. And so, um, uh, maybe in the extra additional five minutes with the podcast now, right. but it's, it's, it's less than an hour. And, um, uh, over the years they have quite a backlist, which I also highly recommend. Yeah, and yeah. right now I think they're on their summer break, but even then they're still putting stuff up every week. And mm-hmm. the archival stuff is so good that it's almost right. it's almost a good time to start listening to it when they're yeah. doing kind of reruns. I mean, it's like one of the first podcasts, I think. It's been around forever. Like, yeah. what, I would say like close 20 years. Well, it, it's been a radio show forever. Right. And I think they were among the first to kind of realize that they could turn the radio show into a podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. And so um, until very recently, there was no ads whatsoever. It was BBC kind of, you know, generosity, but they have now have ads on the non UK yeah, versions right. of the, of right. the, I like um, uh, the other BBC one that I like is uh, seriously. Do you ever listen to that? I haven't. Tell me about that one. That one is kind of a documentary. It's they're like 30 minute documentaries on any given subject. Um, they did a kind of a cool one about it was kind of a mini series about um, this guy who was like the minister of information for for Putin and all of his manipulative ways. I can't remember his name now, but it's uh, you know they'll skip around different subjects. They're independent uh, documentary producers, and it's just an anthology type show. So it's an audio documentary. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Okay yeah. Called seriously. Seriously yeah. That's yeah. a great name. And they're usually like half an hour long. So they're good. They're kind of bite-sized things, but, um, and they'll, and they'll pick up stuff from around the world. There'll be stuff that was produced for them, but I think it's like kind of a platform for audio producers who are getting a break, you know? Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, this is maybe worth of a longer recommendations, but out of England, the people who put out the browser now put out something called a listener, which is a daily um, review of podcast podcast episodes. Huh. Great podcast pass oh, that's podcast a good idea. episodes. Yeah, which is a great idea. Yeah. Which is not you don't have to subscribe to the whole thing, but this particular podcast episode was really great. You should listen to it. Yeah, that's a really good idea because I don't know about you. I've become a little gun shy about subscribing to podcasts because I just I'm, I'm already behind enough. Right. But if you just give me one episode to check out. Right. That's called The Listener. I'll check that out. So um, tell us about your recent projects and your books and what you're up to. You want me to do my last cool tool? <laughs> I oh, got one. I forgot. We forgot one. I'm <laughs> yeah, sorry. I skipped no. the last one. This, but I, I'm putting them in different order than I, than I suggested. All right. Okay. Thing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Because I want to end with uh, this dumb thing that I love so much called Decibel X, uh, which is just, it's very simple. There's not much to talk about. But it's uh, it's an app that just you know you open it up and it tells you what the decibel reading is. Oh, really? Yeah, and that's that's it. Like that's the whole story. That's cool. Um, but it is like I get such pleasure out of it, and it's kind of like junior high school dork pleasure mm-hmm. of just like I wonder what the decibel level is in here. <laughs> you know? And there's a little there is one there's one tab that you can poke on that'll say like analogous to it's like it's a quiet room or it's a it's a noisy street or whatever Um, have you been able to learn to estimate it pretty closely yourself by now no not really i mean you know very very maybe very roughly like i i kind of i kind of mostly i'm i'm interested in how quiet it is so i'm pretty good at like being i bet it's under 50 or whatever you know so um, but like I said, I have no point to this, <laughs> so, but I find that it's one of the apps that I check the most frequently. Like I, if, if I looked at wow. those statistic things, I bet I, I bet I open it as much as I open Instagram. I would, I would, no I would reason. use it to complain in restaurants. I would, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I would, yeah. I would go up and say, look, it is <laughs> 85 <laughs> decibels in here. You've got you, you could, gotta, you could, you could totally do that. You could totally do that. Yeah. Restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, terrible. it's a geeky one, but I, it's, uh, it's free decibel X, uh, for, I use it on the iPhone. I assume there's an Android. Version. And, and do you have any sense of like how accurate it is? 
I have total faith in technology. Kevin. <laughs> you, you believe the advertising. Okay. <laughs> no, I've never cross checked it. I, 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 <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it seems in it, its answers seem intuitively right in the sense of like, yeah, it is kind of like it's loud in here now. So it's in the red zone or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but I'm not going to fact check it. It sounds, it sounds well, useful. No, it's, it's really, really handy. And, and there are, are different, this is just one decibel X. Okay. So, and they call it a noise meter, which I guess is what a decibel meter is. Yeah. And it just gives you, there's a little dot, you know, on the, on the main interface page, there's a, there's a little dial and then there's a, the number showing digitally at the bottom and you can, I guess you, I guess, I don't know what other functions you can do with it. And it's looking at this, it looks like it um, runs on iOS. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I use. I, I, I would guess there's an Android version, but I don't know. Doesn't seem to say, but well, it's in the app store. So who knows? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's really cool. I'm going to load that because <laughs> I do like to complain about the noise. Yeah. It, it, and actually it is like, I can imagine use cases that would actually be use cases, but I just use it as an yeah. Well, for me, I was using a, uh, a blower and I, I realized after that, my ears felt fuzzy for a couple of hours after. So it would be nice to like, oh. see how loud that blower is. Huh. And also an angle uh, grinder. Yeah. I was using to cut some pipe. And well, I, I after I cut a couple of pieces of pipe, I thought, you know what? I should put some earplugs on. <laughs> and so I, I did, but uh, yeah. it was uh -huh. a bit too late. So I'm going to check the, the sound out, <laughs> on, the volume on those things. Yeah. What 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 uh, remind me of what kind of uh, uh, what, what's normal? Um, what's the, what's the red? Uh, uh, the red the, is when it gets to like uh, looks like about a hundred. Okay, that's considered uh, yeah ninety. Like, it looks like around ninety to a hundred. Let's look at the. Uh -huh. Let's look and at it, It's also here. like a matter of says, uh, duration, right? I mean, it's like it, you you can get a short term exposure to something, and it's just like sure it's consistent, right? Yeah, and this isn't going to sort of tell you. Uh, it's just, it's just mm -hmm. going to tell you what's happening right at that moment. So, like, sure. subway is a hundred, uh, jets uh, like that's a hundred and forty, hundred and fifty, or something like that. Jet jet engine. Um, but it'd be I think, cool to check it out on a plane. Actually, I've never done that. Yeah, um, but I think it does graph things. I think you can make a graph, right? Yeah, it does look like you can do that. Okay, yeah. which would be useful. Yeah. Now, some of this, they're always trying to, it, I get these alerts saying like, hey, do you want to get the pro version? So I don't know what that does, but I don't want the pro version. I'm okay. okay. I want the amateur version. <laughs> <laughs> Decided amateur on this yeah. matter. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, okay. So um, now we have the four. Okay. Thank you for reminding me of the last one. Um, we didn't want to leave that out. No, I, I, that was, I'm going to load that right away. As soon as, as soon as we get off, I'm going to load it up. <laughs> Save the best for last. So, um, Rob, one of the things we've been talking about uh, for a while is, as you've been working on it, is this really great book. It's a, it's a short book that you wrote called "The Art of Noticing," and it's kind of a uh, kind of like prompts or like a, a actual uh, service oriented book that sh tells you how to uh, right. benefit right. from being more observant. So. Here's how I describe it to people. It's like, a, a re, a, and this is true, that it sort of the project started out as, you know, a kind of more standard book that would have been 90%. Here's the problem with how everyone wants your attention and we're all in this time of distraction and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then 10% of like, and here's some, here's some fun things you can do to fight back. And then I realized like all I cared about was that last 10%. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a really good time doing that. And so I flipped it. So it's t it starts out as 10%. It's like, hey, here's the problem. You kind of already know the problem. Like you don't really need, to, in my opinion, you don't really need to spend a whole lot of time convincing people that they feel yeah. distracted. Yeah. Um, so we blow past that and get to like, um, yeah, it's like walk through an unfamiliar part of town or um, meet a friend half or pick a halfway point with and meet a friend there, you know, on a map like pick a halfway point on the map and just meet there or follow the like go to the quietest place you can find or eat in a restaurant that looks really dubious <laughs> all stuff like that you know that are meant to be and it kind of moves from some of them are it starts out visually oriented then the second section is trying to get you out of just because that's what we think of when we think of noticing as we think mm -hmm. of the visual 
so there's sort of scavenger huntish things um uh, then it gets into trying to get into your other senses and make make us making a sound map and um, trying to pay attention to textures and things like this. Uh, then it moves into kind of exploring the world. And by that, I mean, like people always ask about favorites or ones that I actually do. And one that I actually do a lot is the big box archaeologist. If I have to go to Walmart or something. I give myself a mission, like what's the weirdest thing on sale at Walmart today? (laughs) (laughs) And it turns it into a game. So a lot of them are gamification things. And last time I went to Walmart, it was um, Pop-Tarts cereal. Did you know that that's a thing? Oh, no. Wow. Yuck. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) My my, my my favorite place to play that is at Randy 99 Ranch. Which for the people who aren't in the West Coast, this is the kind of mega Oriental yeah. grocery supermarket the oh, okay. where they've got the Pan Asian thing, where they've got the imports from Thailand, Japan, the Philippines, China, and just the packaging alone is a you know is a is a mind grenade and eye candy. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. All the weird stuff that you haven't encountered that you have no idea what it is or that people eat it. Yeah. Or maybe it's not even being eaten. It could be something else. Um, the produce section even is like even that. the produce section. But yeah. I love the packaging uh, goods because they're just uh, of an alien species. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that that's really fun. But it's also fun in a place like Walmart that you think of as just being like, oh, banal America, whatever. And to tr- that's where your senses kind of go dead. And all you're trying to do is think of how do I get out of here? And I don't know how often you even go to Walmart, but I do have to go from time to time. And it seems like every time I have to go, I need three things. So they're in three different corners. So I have to walk the entire <laughs> uh-huh. five acre expanse. Yeah. This place. <laughs> sure. So, 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 um, uh, where did most of these suggestions, uh, 130 of them, come from? Or were they were you soliciting them from people? Were they ones you, you uncovered from your research, or were ones that you just sort of dreamed up about? Well, this would be really cool to do. What, where are they coming from? So it started with me dreaming them up, and kind of it related to I teach this class at the School of Visual Arts, a short class every year called Point of View. And I, I have a big thing about make the, wanting the students to just to, to notice things that other people overlooked, because I think this is really an important like this. If there's one message about that sort of attention economy stuff is that I feel that sometimes when you're dealing with students, they will feel that, well, if I'm if I'm noticing this thing, but no one's talking, no one else is talking about it. It's not like trending. then I guess it must not be very important, you know. And I think that's a disastrous conclusion. Like it's really important that you zone in on like the stuff that you noticed that no one else noticed is the most important thing, right? So a lot of this came out of the class. And then I had an assignment that um, I would make the students do, which was just practice paying attention. That was the whole assignment. They had a week to come up with some way of resolving that challenge. So some of the ideas in the book came directly from that. And then I started asking people just various People like Paul Antonelli at MoMA and um, Seth Godin and uh, Dan Ariely and just various people that I knew one way or another for their ideas and stole those <laughs> <laughs> uh, with credit, with credit. Um, and so it became a mash of those things. And then some were taken from the stuff I'd read. There's some Duchamp stuff about the infra thin, which is his idea about um, sort of stuff that's outside the five senses, like uh like the, the warmth of a chair that's just been vacated. That's an example of the infra thin. Mm-hmm. So one of the assignments is hunt for the infra, you know, be on the alert for the infra thin. So stuff like that. Wow. Um, so that's it's really a, cool. it's a variety of things and it's for people, it's definitely good for students, but it's also good. I think for anybody who is just looking for some creative ways to break out of the kind of rut um, without being anti, like I'm not into the whole, Oh, do a digital detox and take a month off from like, I don't think that's really realistic for most people. This is more scalable stuff that you can work into your life. And it's more about adding something to your life as opposed to denying something. Yeah, from right. you. Uh, one of the best noticers that I um, suddenly uh, recently realized were working professionally were, were comedians. Oh yeah. 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 
comedians are always noticing things that nobody else seems to notice or they find it really important or and then funny. I mentioned in this that Seinfeld, that's his whole career. Like right, li- exactly. literally, did you ever notice? You know? Did you ever yeah. notice, right. <laughs> um, and, and George Carlin was an amazing, I mean, so, and they're, and they're doing exactly the kind of noticing where it's stuff that's, that we've all seen before without Not really registering, noticing yeah. it, noticing it. Yeah. 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 I think for yeah. some reason, someone brought up to me recently, an old Seinfeld bit. They don't really have this anymore, but remember when they had on airplanes where you would throw away your razor, <laughs> you'd have the little yeah. like deposit your razor yeah. here. Uh-huh. And, he was, uh-huh. and he was like, who's doing all this shaving on an airplane <laughs> that you need to change yeah. razors <laughs> mid flight? Is it the wolf man? <laughs> Uh, just recently, I think on his um, YouTube series, um, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, there, there was a bit about the fact that um, the word company, you have, we're having company, hmm. which was what, what I grew up hmm, with. Yeah. My mom would talk about company, that we don't use that word anymore. It's like, who, we're, it's just completely vaporized. Nobody talks about companies coming over. I didn't know that. Yeah, I hadn't noticed it either, but it's absolutely true. We just, we just stopped using that word for <laughs> company like when was the last time you said oh yeah. a company's coming over right. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah and it's a strange word too company it is an odd choice uh, that's what I, that's where i thought you were going to go with this is like why company yeah. what is that supposed yeah. to yeah uh, yeah, yeah. companion you're being accompanied yeah um companion but um so yeah so so noticing um it sounds it sounds wonderful. Uh, the name of the book again is what? It's The Art of Noticing. The Art of Noticing. It has okay. a very long subtitle. It's 131 Ways to Spark Creativity, Find Inspiration, Discover Joy in the Everyday. <laughs> and, and 131, you just ran out at 131? Oh, yeah. Or? No. Th- so there's people always ask about this. Um, I, I, first, I was going to do 100. And then my editor and I talked. And I had 170 or something of them. And we're cut, cutting them back. And I decided to go for the Cosmopolitan magazine theory. You know how they would always have like, it seemed like it was always a prime number, like 167 ways to orgasm and whatever, like, and something about the specificity of it made it seem more Mm, credible to me. (laughs) Like these must be the 167 ways. So my one, I decided I wanted it to be a prime number and that was, that was, and we ended up at 131. Cool. Okay. Cool. (laughs) Wow. these are there's, there's the 131 no, yeah. ways. Yeah, exactly. There are no more. Way. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rob, this has been a blast talking to you. Really enjoyable. and, and oh, It's been fun. I yeah. appreciate being a uh, company in your, uh, <laughs> your home. Your and they're, and they're great, great suggestions. I, uh, really, really good suggestions. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. I can't wait to get that switch. Uh, I'm, that, that's exactly what I needed was that switch mate toggle light switch. Well, let me know if it works it solves out. solves the problem. Let me know if it works out. I was actually thinking of calling the electrician and saying, could you please pull a neutral wire? <laughs> that would have cost a lot of money. This is like... Yeah. This is it. Yeah. Well, I hope it works <laughs> this for is you. It. I hope it works for you. And yeah. I, I should have said at the top, I am a big, legitimate fan of this show and have purchased many items. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh, cool. Well, thank you. So uh, so I'm glad to, that this stuff that I suggested wasn't too embarrassing. I was really nervous about it. Um, no, no. It's really, it's perfect okay. stuff. And and you, uh, just as a teaser, you had some backup uh, tools. So we're, we'll save those for another time. We'll have you back on. Okay. And we can go through those. Okay. <laughs> okay. That sounds good. Anytime. All righty. 